What a privilege to be chosen and called by the God in order to serve each other and later especially to serve others together. It is fantastic. What a privilege. I am so glad that uh, this is the case and that uh, God has chosen us and called us into his uh, work, into his saving uh, grace and in order to help, help and save others, to save the world, so to speak. And of course, at, at the result of reconcile everyone together with God, both vertically and horizontally. So this is a privilege for sure. Welcome, dear beloved of God and of myself. I am so glad that I can be with you again after a couple of uh, months, I can say, because of the series that is just over about the powerful and glorious return of Jesus Christ. I hope uh, it has made an impact with you and uh, that you are also looking forward to also experience that part of God's glory but also God's indignation and we will be witnesses of that passive witnesses but still witnesses that's what I believe anyway I'm going to start a new uh, series today this series is called I'm going to call it as it is God's Word what it says and what it seems to say and the question is of course what is the matter with that the subtitle is what exactly are truth and lie oh yes and this study therefore is going to be divided in two categories the first cat category is going to uh, is going to be about the question what exactly is truth and what is lie what is that exactly and i think that you will um, hear some things or discover some things that you haven't uh, uh, known before or you haven't understood like that before so a lot will be recognizable but i will lay out that principle first and that is very 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 important to understand that's why i'm going to lay that foundation first but that is it's going to take maybe even more than 50 percent of this series because it's so important and then because you will have understood the first part of this series about the principle behind truth and lie then i will continue with the word of god and how is our mindset with regard to studying god's word so that's going to be the second part of this series it's not going to be a very long series but it will take some videos definitely all right so i would say let's start with the standard slides again which are of foundational truth so this is the title god's word what it says and what it seems to say and then i will start this series with the question what exactly are the truth and the lie so first again about the facts and principles about god's word we know these bullet points already so i'm not going to go into it but please you i invite you to go through them even if you know them already take a look have a refreshment after such a long series the previous one uh pr probably you have uh, it it has become some maybe fake for you so go through them and don't forget the last one don't forget please it's a jigsaw puzzle god's word is to be used often very often even as a jigsaw puzzle and that is so important so that we are not becoming over spiritual so so to speak or so called and say oh it is not it is not written in god's word so it is not true 
No, it's also important to put the puzzle pieces together in order to see a bigger picture. And that means read between the lines as well. Okay, next one. We know that all of God's word is for everyone. We know that already. Everyone. No one excluded. And uh, this in God's word also is about truth and principles, not morality, which uh, most religions think of. No, it's about truth and principles. That's it. And we can all learn from that. But God's word is not addressed to everyone. We know that already. Uh, let me read 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 where it says, Endeavor to present yourself to God qualified, an unashamed worker, correctly cutting the word of truth. You see why it's read. Word of truth, that's how God's word is called in this context. Why? Because if you do not correctly cut the word of truth, it is not truth anymore. So this is again of foundational uh, importance. So what do I mean by cutting correctly? I mean making the correct distinctions. And those are made within three dimensions. Three dimensions. The first one is the evangels. And there are two predominant evangels leading up to two target groups or two target audiences, if you want, Israelites or Gentiles non-israelites the second dimension is eras for which period time period was this specific passage intended very important and the third one is perspectives meaning is the statement in the text absolute or relative there are two flavors only absolute is from god's uh, point of view and relative is from humans a human point of view okay so having said that let's start with the series so the question is again I'm laying out the principles the question is what is truth really really and this question seems quite easy right probably it is to you you never know so it says you could say speak the truth and no lies that would be a reply maybe from most people that's possible Sh could this be the case literally speak the truth and no lies or is there a little more to it remember what i shared about leadership in the past right the question is where does leadership begin where does it begin it begins right here with ourselves with ourselves that is so important to start and understand and see that truth in order to lead others we need to be able to lead ourselves first and foremost so leadership is a a kind of a condition a state of being and it's again it's important to go over that again because there is a very important link with truth that's why so how do we lead ourselves how do we do that listen to this truth and leadership start to remind that please uh, remember that truth and leadership are connected it starts with our mindset that's where it starts so either we are standing in truth or we are not standing in truth that means we are standing in the lie either we are a leader or we are a follower there are only two flavors so as an example lead ourselves when do we do that when our language also is congruent with the fact 
that we lead ourselves. So it starts with our mindset, but our language will adapt to that. So we say what we will do. That's our language. I'm going to do this. I will do that. That's our language if we lead ourselves. We cannot switch language and mindset because if you start with language, then you're busy with form or only outer form. And that is not where we start, I would say. It is possible that your mindset starts to adapt slowly. Yes, true. But it starts from the inside out. That's how it normally starts. If we follow ourselves, what happens very, very often, we say what we have to do or we say what we must do. You see the point? Because who is the assigner if we have to do something? If I'm saying to you, yeah, I have to work tonight. That means I have an assigner who assigned me in order to work tonight. Who is the assigner? That's myself. If I'm working for myself, as an example, then I myself am the assigner of me. And me is the follower. And I myself is the leader. So that means you identify the most with the follower and not with the leader. You see what's happening here. So please ponder on this because it's a very important principle. And again, it, it's being reflected in our language. Can you be a leader and report to someone higher up the organization? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Can you be the, a leader and also follow orders from someone else? Yes, of course. But then is the question, how? Because when you talk about leadership, people tend tend to think about you are giving the orders because you are the leader but that's not true because the leadership is not a position leadership is a mindset okay so you can be a leader and also follow orders the question is how and that i will show in a couple of slides very soon And again, the moment I have fun, time is flying. Let's continue. Leadership again begins with ourselves. So every human being has two roles within them. Within them. Either you are a leader or a follower. Either you are a master or a slave. Either we are the driver or the passenger. So the question is, with what are we identifying ourselves? That's the point. Are we identifying ourselves with being a leader, master or driver, or follower, slave or passenger? And oh boy, how great is that difference? Let's take a look. Mindset, remember, mindset. Let's take a look. It can go two ways. Let's start with the left one. It can, uh, it can be a mindset of followership, which is a mindset of victimhood. That's how you could call it. What happens uh, with those people? We accuse others because we don't want to take responsibility or ownership. We always make excuses if someone or something doesn't go right or we didn't do something right. And the, the worst one of all is denial, not even acknowledging the fact that we did something wrong, but totally denying it as if it doesn't exist. That is the worst uh, trait of a victim mentality of being identifying yourself with followership let's take a look at the leadership we we can of course we can smell that already 
Res leadership is always result oriented. Always results oriented. So it starts with ownership. Ownership. How do you take ownership? By starting to acknowledge the fact that you are the one who did something, as an example. And you did it wrong. And then you take responsibility for the fact that you did it wrongly. You see the point? And then you also accept accountability for what you did. And it can hurt. And that's called the pain of, of discipline, remember? It's either the pain of discipline in the short term or the pain of regret in the, sh in the long term, which is way worse. Remember the law of the leverage? So always it's the same because God made them, God designed these laws, and God has implemented them and made them totally valid and operational. So it's very important that you know them, well, that you at least understand them and acknowledge them. So again, it's either followership or leadership. Two totally different ways, obviously. Either you are fleeing into accusations, excuses, and especially denial, or you embrace ownership responsibility and accountability so let's take a look at how that looks well first of all let, let's continue with this point that truth and leadership are connected again remember i'm going to answer the question now can you be a leader and report to someone higher up the organization yes as already mentioned can you be a leader and also follow orders at the same time? Yes, of course. How can that be? By taking ownership of the project that's being entrusted to you. So you have an order to do something, to execute something, whatever it is. It's like a project. It's always a project in the broad sense of the word. So it has been entrusted to you. What do you do with it? You start by taking ownership of that project. It's going to be now your project. You, you are the responsible one for that project now. And this means that you put your heart into this project and you stand for it. You see the point? And if you stand for it, you not only take responsibility, but also you accept accountability in what form, in whatever form that is, that is how it works. So ownership needs to be balanced first because it starts with ownership. It needs to be balanced first. What does it mean? When is ownership rightly balanced, exactly balanced? Let's take a look. Uh, I'm going to show you a schedule, but then I will continue in the next video. Okay, let's take a look. Ownership. So these are the four elements of uh, being a leader. It starts with ownership. And there are two very important elements that need to be in balance with each other, exactly in balance. One is, you could say, the positive part of the element, and the other is the negative part of the element. But you can also switch it around. It's, it's, the, it's a matter how you look at it. This could also be positive and this negative. We are going to look at this schedule in the next video. I thank you very much for watching and hopefully see you next time. Bye-bye.